As you continue down Cokerdale from Thrum Mill, there's only a small road sign to give away the secret location of the beautiful old church hidden away among the trees. Brinkburn Priory is in a place of almost perfect seclusion between the River Coket's steep wooded banks, where the river makes so erratic a curve that the Priory and Manor House next to it are almost surrounded by water. The name Brinkburn, first recorded in 1120, means Briar's Spring or Burn. Arriving down the old carriage drive at Brinkburn, the first thing that you see of the church is this impressive north doorway. Through this beautiful door, with its elaborate Norman and early English decoration, the medieval worshipper would have entered the church. So secluded is Brinkburn Priory that the story is told of a band of Scots reavers who searched for the place in vain. They had just started on their way home, empty handed, when they heard the bells being rung by the monks in thanksgiving for their deliverance. The Scots, hearing the bells, returned and plundered the priory. In his anger and frustration, the prior ordered the bells to be removed from the belfry and thrown into the river. The priory was founded about 1135 in the reign of Henry I by William Bertram, Baron of Mitford, as the house for about 12 Augustinian canons. The church was first dedicated to St Peter, but from the reign of Henry II the name appears as the convent of St Peter and St Paul. This little statue is dedicated to St Peter and St Paul. The most striking features of the church interior are the four tall pointed arches of the crossing and the three tiers of triple lancet windows at the east end above the altar. In the north transept hangs this bold figure of the risen Christ, carved in solid beech by Fenwick Lawson. This magnificent organ in the south transept was built in 1868 and was the gift of Sir William Armstrong. This tombstone, dated 1485, is that of William, prior of Brinkburn and a bishop of Durham. It was only discovered when a new floor was being prepared in Victorian times. Also discovered by Victorian workmen was this squint cut through the fabric of the wall above the presbytery into the south transept so that ill and infirm canons in a corridor above could have a view of the high altar when mass was being conducted. This wash basin or piscina was placed near to the altar so that the clergy could wash their hands. After the dissolution of the monasteries, the building was allowed to fall into a state of decay and by the end of the 1600s, the roof had fallen in and regular services had ceased. These old photographs show the ruined state of the southeast corner of the church in the 1860s. The most extensive damage was to the southwest angle of the nave, which had fallen before 1726. In the middle of the 19th century, the owner of Brinkburn, Cadogan Hodgson Cadogan, decided to restore the church. And in 1868, the architect John Austin began work with repairs to stonework, a new roof and a new floor. After the disposal of the priory in 1536, parts of the monastic buildings had been adapted to form a manor house and modifications and additions to this continued throughout Victorian times. This illustration of the manor house by William Turner dates from 1801. Inside the manor house, some of the old monastic walls have been incorporated into the newer structure. Until recently, they were hidden by plaster and panelling.
Down below, the medieval basement became the wine cellar. And next to it was added an extensive kitchen with all mod cons. In 1956, the manor house and priory was finally abandoned by its owners, the Fenwick family, who passed it into the care of English heritage.